Garden Path Podcast. This is episode one, uh, the introduction and inaugural episode. Um, today, I thought I would just kind of share why I am doing this podcast, a little bit of a background of my gardening history, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, my name is Misty Little, and I am outside of Houston, Texas, and I've been a gardener since, I guess you could call officially a gardener since around 2002, Um, but I've always kind of enjoyed gardening in various forms from other people, Um, my grandmother and my mother and my great-grandmother before that, growing up. Um, And so I guess recently I noticed that a lot of the gardening podcasts have kind of fallen by the wayside and just kind of pondered, hey, maybe I should start a gardening podcast. And then I decided to just go for it, even though I know nothing about podcasting, which I think that's how most people start. So you just have to kind of go by the seat of your pants and go for it. So um, back in, to, to, uh, I guess it was 2012, um, Brian and Susie Morris um, from Chiots Run, started the Cultivate Simple podcast, which I really enjoyed and loved um, until it ended in, I guess, spring of 2014. Um, And so they kind of got me onto podcasts and listening to all sorts of genres uh, on iTunes and other places. And so I, like I said, kind of started noticing gardening podcasts had fallen by the wayside, which... You know, I guess it's understandable. It's kind of hard to talk about gardening in some aspects, but I guess the more I thought about it, the more I realized that maybe, maybe gardening uh, just needs another podcast, needs another voice, and throwing mine into the mix. You know, we'll see how long this lasts. Uh, you know, maybe I can make it into a seasonal thing. Um, summers are a little hard here, uh, especially July and August, and maybe that'll be a good downtime to do podcasts as well as do some in the winter. So we'll just see how it goes from there. My gardening background, like I said, began in 2002 when I moved from Texas where I, you know, born and raised, went to college here. Um, and we got married to my husband, Chris, and we moved to Florida and he was going to grad school on the space coast, which is, um, the East coast, kind of central, uh, East of Orlando around, um, Cape Canaveral and South. So we lived there for about two years and I did gardening on our, con- on our balcony of an apartment. And it was just, you know, some hand-me-down plants for my mom. We tried to start an avocado tree, nothing too crazy. Um, cause you know, just wasn't quite into gardening then. So garden there and then uh, we moved down to South Florida in Miami where we stayed in an apartment for a year and our our plants collection kind of grew from there. Um, South Florida is around zone 10b so we're talking more tropicals not very many freezes if any and um, you can really start getting some cool plants growing in there. Um, so where we lived in Miami was the far west side of town in an area called Kendall and it bordered, we were very close to, um, like the Western agriculture areas and almost Everglades national park. And so down in those Western agricultural areas, there is a ton of plant nurseries, um, orchids and bromeliads and tropical things and just all sorts of cool things if you just get going down these little roads off in the middle of nowhere down in the Redland area. And so we kind of started exploring our our new home in Florida, um, going to natural areas and seeing, you know, this intersection of native plants with all these exotic plants that have escaped <laughs> over time um, and seeing all sorts of cool things. So we got into orchids in there, and then we moved up just north a little bit to um, the suburbs of Fort Lauderdale, um, two different places in there where we had one place we rented a townhouse, um, 
and then the next place we had a house, a little two bedroom house for about four years. Um, and then during all this time, we're totally container gardening, um, moving our plants with us. And it's pretty funny when we're having to move, you know, we move all of our house stuff and then we had to make like three or four trips back and forth with containers in the back of our trucks, uh, you know, moving them an hour north. And, um, so of course, during this time, we were moving from an apartment to a townhouse to a house and our gardening, our garden expands and, um, which is great. And we're growing all sorts of different tropicals and um, things that need a lot of moisture. And, you know, my husband rigs up cool watering system for our porch and it's really, really awesome. And we're having so much fun. But then in um, 2009, uh, some friends of ours who had gone on a cross country road trip um, decided to they came home from their cross country road trip and I kind of got, I don't know, an itch to do something different. I kind of felt like we were stagnating. We kind of weren't making plans for the future. We just, I wanted to do something. And so I, I happened to see an article in Backpacker Magazine about the Appalachian Trail. And I don't know, I just felt like, hey, this is something we could do. So we kind of spent 2009 planning and saving and deciding if this is really what we wanted to do in 2010. And by the end of uh, 2009, um, it was definitely looking like that was what was going to happen. So of course we had to sell our plants because you can't backpack with, you know, plants <laughs> and, um, or a lot of belongings. And, um, so we had to downsize dramatically and keep what we wanted in a pod and, um, which is a big storage container for those who are, uh, don't know what a pod is. And, um, told pretty much all of our plants and which was kind of heartbreaking, you know, cause a lot of them we grown from seed or we've gotten little bitty starts of, and you know, they turn into massive full grown plants, but you know, we were okay that you kind of make peace with it. And, um, some, a few things we tried to give to two family members and some of them perished and a couple of them we actually have gotten back and, but that's a very tiny handful. I mean, of plants that we've, continue to have to this day. Um, and so we did the Appalachian Trail and after that we came back to Texas where our family is and, um, you know, trying to find another job and kind of figure out what we wanted to do after that. And so we couldn't find any permanent positions. And so we took a field job. Um, we're both biologists by trade. Um, and then after that little temporary job ended, we were still kind of like, well, what are we going to do? So we went back to Florida to hike the Florida trail. Um, and after that, we came back to Texas again, took another temporary job, which ended up translating to me getting a full-time position with the same company. So, which brought us to Houston and, um, we went to college in Galveston, which, is an okay town. <laughs> we like Galveston, but we didn't really care for Houston at the time. But Houston's kind of grown on us now that we live in the area. We're not directly in Houston. We're outside of it. Um, we're definitely in a more rural, but definitely growing suburban area um, with pine trees. We're kind of at an intersection of habitats. We're not too far from where the piney woods kind of join up with the black land prairie, um, you know, maybe 10 miles west of where we're at. You can definitely see the transition from piney woods, big thicket habitat to more open prairie, um, post oak, black land prairie kind of, uh, areas. So it's definitely an interesting habitat zone area we're in. As for gardening zone here now, um, we're in zone 9A, so we can do some tropical stuff, but we definitely get a lot of freezes, which can become a problem. Um, so we definitely push our luck on a few things, uh, covering them in the winter, like citrus or um, some gingers and things like that. But we have some plumeria and staghorn ferns and some other like tropical cactus that we bring in and... Um, kind of let them hibernate over the winter. Maybe you bring them out in the warmer times of the winter, which is definitely, Texas is kind of a weird winter. We, our harder parts of winter are January and February. Um, 
but you know we have warm days in the 60s and 70s and so we'll bring plants out for you know maybe even a week at a time and then you know we get these cold spells and everything goes back in so kind of what we're dealing with here so we've been in Houston for four years and at our current house for three and a half years <clears throat> and um, we bought that house and it's about on an acre and a quarter about an acre and a quarter and when we arrived we had <clears throat> just for previous year had one of the worst droughts well you might just call it a continuous drought in a way <laughs> um, in 2011 and so a ton of pine trees had died in the area and including the ones on our property so we lost um, before we had bought the house there was a bunch of pine trees that had they were still standing but were dead including maybe even a sweet gum and a couple other random trees that so we spent a good six months to eight months clearing trees cutting them down chopping them up burning them um just taking care of the yard that hadn't really been taken care of too well when we arrived and um you know then trying to envision how we wanted to garden and so we put in flower gardens first and um did that in a couple different phases and then we worked on vegetable garden, which um, we had to kind of logistically plan. It wasn't exactly convenient because our backyard happens to be on a pond. And um, we also have a septic system. So we had to take into account the slope of the house and the pond the septic system. And it ended up being that our vegetable garden worked out to be best in the front yard. Um, so we had a couple other low-lying spots too that we needed to avoid. It was definitely a logistics. The vegetable garden isn't in the best place, but it works for us. And so something else we have to take into account here since we're semi-rural is deer. We have a very um, friendly deer population that just the only, I guess, predator would be cars and maybe an occasional coyote. <laughs> so definitely have uh, browse issues um, so our vegetable garden is fenced in and um, that's kind of where we're at now with our, our flower and vegetable garden they've been in for a while and so last year we got thrown into the mix was our son Forrest and he's now 14 months old and gardening in that transition was definitely hard and it's still hard we're working on adjusting our expectations and goals. And as he gets older, it will be a lot easier to return to our kind of go, 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 be in the yard all the time phase. And I think I'm going to talk about that as a separate blog, um, I'm used to blogging, <laughs> a separate podcast um, later. Um, so that has definitely changed our, our focus this year. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at on gardening at the moment. Uh, we are heading into late November 2015 here. And we just, I don't know if it necessarily froze, but it got really close to freezing a couple of nights ago. But today again, we're going to be in the 70s. We're going to play a little game of shorts in the afternoon, bundle up in the evening. And that's kind of what goes on here for a while until we have you know, February comes around and then we have some fun <laughs> with cold, cold weather. Um, but we don't get too cold. We don't have a lot of snow. If we get snow, it'll be some flurries. Um, but nothing drastic. Uh, like other people, uh, even further north in Texas, maybe even just an hour north of me, they may get more um, cold weather than we do and ice and snowstorms and things like that. So that's kind of where I'm at. I put on the website for the blog for the podcast oh gosh I'm gonna have to get used to not saying blog and say podcast instead some photos of our garden as it's changed over time I can't find too many from our first apartment but you'll see some from Miami and the townhouse and then our other house in Florida and then you'll see photos of a community garden that we gardened in when we first moved down here to Houston uh, it was a vegetable garden um, oh, that community garden was pretty much was pretty dead when we arrived and we kind of took it over for about a year kind of butted heads with the um 
the manager that garden there for a while, um, which apparently is common. <laughs> Community garden managers can can be difficult, I guess, from what I've read. Um, so it was kind of good when we did buy our house and to kind of separate ourselves from that community garden, even though we, we did have fun. We had to grew a lot of, a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers. Oh my gosh. Um, and did kind of spruce that place up there for a while, but we said goodbye and now we're, now we're done with that. So I have pictures of that. I've got pictures of our gardens here at our house and, um, you can kind of see how it's changed over time. I guess in my goal with this podcast is to, I guess, talk about life lessons that I have with gardening, but also to have like stories with people I know starting out with, I want to interview some people I know, as well as other gardeners that I've met on Twitter um, and blogging and that sort of thing. And just kind of get their stories out there on, on the podcast. And cause I feel like sometimes I think people feel like gardening is for other people. Um, but really it's not, and you don't need an elaborate garden to call yourself a gardener. You can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that and be happy with it. Um, I definitely think you can go down the rabbit hole. That's for sure. Um, especially if you start finding, a niche of gardening you like, you know, maybe you really like orchids or maybe you like roses or, you know, whatever. You can definitely go down the rabbit hole. That is for sure. Um, but there's something for everybody in gardening. And I think I'm, I'm 35 and my husband's 36. I think now my, those in my age group, you know, their families are getting a little older. Um, most people I know had children <laughs> earlier than I did. Um, so their families are getting older and they're kind of I'm definitely noticing a trend towards people being interested in gardening. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, we were kind of the, the outliers like gardening. You're 25, you're in your gardening. That's a little weird. Um, so I definitely think it's an age thing, but not necessarily. I think there's a lot of interesting people who are younger who are gardening or even just interested in plants and not necessarily gardening, maybe just interested in native plants. Um, so I'd like to touch on that as well as the podcast episode episodes develop. Um, this is definitely going to be a working podcast. Um, so bear with me as I learn the ropes and, uh, keep going forward. Um, you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, as well as through a general RSS feed on the blog. If you want to pop up in your blog feed reader, you can listen there as well. And I'm sure there's other podcatchers out there that I'm going to learn about, and I will try to make sure they're available there as well. Um, and if you have questions, you can email me at thegardenpathpodcast at gmail.com. We'll leave a comment on the blog. If you have an interest in being on the podcast, um, send me an email and we can see if that, if you might be a good fit for a podcast, uh, interview, or if there's someone you think you would like to hear that you might be able to connect me with, that would be a great option as well. Um, so I do have an episode number two ready to go that I will be debuting in a few weeks. I sat down and spoke with my mom um, and talked a little bit about gardening um, and my grandmother. Um, my grandmother was probably the biggest gardener in my life uh, growing up. And uh, I definitely like the episode that got recorded with my mom and I kind of want to expound upon that eventually again with her. So I hope to have that up soon, and I hope you guys uh, keep, keep with me as I do this little podcast. All right, thank you, and you guys have a great day. Bye.